Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing another walkthrough service here on one of my favorite series of spinning reels. So this is an Abu Garcia Cardinal Premier, a CP2F, a two-ball bearing reel. And uh, I, I have the big brothers uh, to this reel, the size three and four uh, models, and uh, and they're just they're solid solid uh, spinning reels in my opinion they're just great uh, i picked this up recently though this one uh, on ebay and uh, for a relatively uh, cheap price actually and you know it's uh, mechanically sound recently serviced it we're going to go through all the take apart steps the cleaning and talk a little bit about the reel uh, one thing that was unfortunate with this reel is it was very dirty on the inside and when I say dirty, I don't mean like dirt or, you know, mud or sand uh, per se, but uh, it, it actually was over lubed on the inside and, uh, and, and it actually created quite a few problems. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, I do actually have a separate video that you can watch on the YouTube channel about what happens when you over lube your fishing reels. Uh, so that topic kind of comes to mind here. So we've got spool off here. Uh, so, you know, we're just going to walk through uh, literally all these uh, steps here. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time cleaning in here. Okay, we've got a, a set screw here at the bottom that needs to come out. Uh, but the, uh, the, the bulk of it, though, was that there was so much lube, and I would say a few different kinds of lube, actually, uh, to the point where it just kind of got uh, to a, a part where the the lube just kind of turns into a wax almost. And, you know, that's never, never a good sign. So that cap kind of snaps on and, and kind of comes off there. Okay, and then we've got three screws in these positions that need to come out. But yeah, the uh, I, I call it, uh, you know, the, the, the gumming effect or the wax effect. You know, you can call it anything you'd like, you know, but the bottom line is, is it affects the functionality and the mechanics, you know, and a fishing reel is just like any other mechanical device. Uh, you know, everything has to be plumb and flush and smooth and clean in order for it to function properly. Uh, and, you know, it's like if you don't change the oil out in your in your engine, you know, in a car or a lawnmower or anything else, uh, you know, things uh, gum up over time, you get dirty with contaminants and different things like that. And that's kind of what we had in this reel here. So I, I didn't bother doing any uh, separate recording on that. I, d I have occasionally done recordings on some reels where I just kind of focus on just the cleaning aspects of that. You know, I'm not doing that in this video, of course, but we are going to talk about it and some of the things that we had to do here. So, uh, this, uh, um, side plate here is a little challenging to get out sometimes I find on some of these reels. And so I'm just kind of using this razor blade here to just kind of help uh, pry it up a little bit. Sometimes it just needs a little bit of persuasion. There we go. So side plate comes off. Okay. So now we have access to our innards here. So we've got a ball bearing right here. Okay. So you just want to make a note of that and pull that off. And then we've also got a very thin brass washer hiding underneath there. Right, and then we've got our main gear set. Now, one thing to note with this uh, series of, uh, of Abu spinning reels is you really cannot get this uh, main gear out without taking uh, the, the drive line out, you know, this main shaft right here first. Okay, so we've got a set screw down here that holds that in position. Okay, and once we get that out, then we'll be able to pull the axle shaft out and then gain access to this area here where we can actually pull the main gear out, okay? But you really can't do it without pulling that, that drive shaft out. That's just one thing to note, okay? Uh, just as a reminder, I've already lubricated all these pieces and parts, and so we're just going through the motions, going through all the steps, okay? And then we're gonna put everything back together here, all right? So we've got the main gear, got a crosswind block and crosswind gear, okay? 
and then uh, in here, uh, I spent a great deal of time cleaning up in here, just all the old grease and everything. It was, it, it, it was terrible actually, to be frank. Uh, you know, the the wax uh, effect is is the only thing that really comes to mind. It just it turned into like this hardened uh, wax. Uh, you know, just chunks of it. Uh, you know, that that's just a piece of of some of it right there. I actually saved this Q-tip here just to kind of give you an idea. Um, of, of some of the grease that was just kind of built up in there. Uh, and, and that's just poor maintenance. And it's also uh, possibly using uh, greases and uh, lubricants that are not appropriate uh, for fishing reels. And I always mention that, of course, in all my videos. Anyone that's watched any, any of my videos will know that I talk about that constantly uh, because uh, you really can't... Uh, um, you, you really don't want to overlook uh, those kinds of details. And yeah, there were lots of older tactics at one point, you know, where you'd use Vaseline or something like that. But, you know, we've come a long way since those days. Uh, you know, there's lots of good products out there that are not too expensive either uh, for fishing reels. So this is a 10 mil nut here, this rotor nut. Okay, so I'm just kind of organizing all my pieces and parts because it's all going to go right back together again right away. Okay. Cleaning is key here, getting all the sand and dirt, grit, anything that's built up underneath here, okay? I'm just going to put that off to the side here, and we're going to focus on this part of the reel for now. So we've got three set screws here. We've got our other bearing hiding under here, and so we want to be able to gain access to that. Now, use caution when you're taking these pieces apart because there's more than one or two pieces under here, I can tell you right now. And one thing that I really like about this reel is it's just smooth. It's just a really, really smooth operator when it's clean and, you know, lubed properly, of course, you know, but the mechanics are part of that, that smooth operating uh, system, of course. So uh, for a two ball bearing reel, you know, it's, uh, it's great. Okay, so you've got this top plate here. You keep all those pieces together here. All right, so this is what I'm talking about in the mechanics here. Um, you've got a few stages of pieces and parts that are stacked up here on the pinion gear. All right, also make note, there's a clip right here, and this will fly out if you move the anti-reverse uh, lever, okay, with this plate off, okay, uh, because the plate will hold this down, you know, when it's there, all right? But when you have it exposed, it'll go flying off on you, so you don't want to do that. Also, make note that you do have a brass bushing down here. It can come out uh, if need be, and, you know, I suggest uh, doing that, you know, when you're cleaning, uh, making sure that that's nice and clean, all right? I'm going to leave that in there, though, uh, for the purposes of time. So we're going to take this stack out gently, Okay, and you should be able to just kind of gently pry it up ever so slowly. Okay, and I'm kind of holding these pieces and parts together here. And make note that there is a spring that my thumb is kind of holding here at the moment. You don't want that spring to go flying away on you. Okay, you can kind of see it sticking out right there. Okay, all right, so this is the full assembly here. Okay, and I'm gently going to pull these pieces off here, starting with the spring. Tiny, tiny spring. You don't want to lose it. Okay, and then you've got a plastic bushing here, so to speak, that goes around your main bearing here. Okay, and then we've got a washer, big brass washer, and then there's a really, really thin brass washer, quite a bit smaller here. You can barely see it actually probably on camera, but it's very, very thin. It's very small. Okay. And then this is where it gets a little trickier. So we've got this plastic uh, Teflon uh, housing here, and actually what is underneath this housing is... Uh, it's not ball bearings, but they're actually metal shafts here, okay? And this kind of acts as a, another little independent bearing system here, basically, okay? But you want to be careful taking this apart because all these will fall out, 
Okay. And they're all, they go all the way around, you know, the entire, you know, Teflon housing here. Okay. So you don't want to lose those. Okay. So once again, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to note that. And I'm going to note that there is a washer here that goes all the way down to the, you know, right up against the pinion gear. Okay. All these pieces and parts, they all need to get cleaned off. Okay. Um, that's just part of the service. Okay, so I'm going to snap that back on there so I don't lose any of those pieces and parts. Okay, this is, you know, important things to note, you know, when you're working on this model reel. Okay, and that's what the video is about is to kind of point those things out to you. All right, so now when it comes to cleaning, okay, penetrating oil, really important. Spraying down all these pieces and parts with that. I did uh, spend a great deal of time uh, with this Purple Power uh, Citrus Cleaner degreaser. Uh, just, you know, cleaning out the housing here, getting all that wax and gum and all that stuff out of there. Okay. Uh, you just, you need to take the time to do the cleaning, basically, um, is really what you want to do. If you want smooth operation, that's what you should do. Okay. So, uh, once we've done all that, you know, we've taken... Uh, you know, uh, some toothbrushes to all these gear teeth, uh, some 4.0 steel wool uh, to the drive shaft here, things of that sort. Uh, you know, lots of Q-tip action, Q-tips, great to have on hand, all right? Basic stuff, okay? So now when we're ready to reassemble, we've got all of our pieces laid out here. They're nice and clean, Okay. I'll, uh, I'll get into these two pieces uh, once we get all the rest of the reel back together, okay? So uh, going back, you know, we're basically just going to go back in the reverse order. You want to make sure that you have that washer, okay, rested up against the pinion gear. You want to make sure that pinion gear is cleaned off really well. And then you've got this outer kind of plastic-like housing that goes on the outside of this Teflon uh you know, um, bearing like system here, essentially, uh, that the, the spring is attached to. Okay. And we're going to go back in sequence and we're just going to put all these pieces and parts back on. We're going to make sure that these are clean. Sometimes taking some 4.0 steel wool, uh, to these pieces is helpful. If they're gummed up, you don't want anything gummed up or, you know, anything to that effect. All right, now when it comes to the bearings on this reel, these bearings, I do believe uh, you can take the top plates off, uh, but they are rather difficult to get into. I've got a separate video on that topic, so I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, but you can actually service these bearings. Um, and, uh, you know, if, uh, you know, these, these are in really good shape and they roll just fine. Uh, you know, but if you want to see uh, more about how you can do that, you can check that out on the YouTube channel. And then just going back, I'll just hit these just with a little bit of penetrating oil, okay, and just kind of, you know, gently flood, you know, that, okay. And you can also use uh, some Real X oil designed for fishing reels. That's another good way to do it, okay. And it will seep down in there without taking off the top plate, okay. All right, but that's really all you need to do there. All right, but if you see evidence of rust and corrosion and things like that on these bearings, you know, they may need to be replaced. Okay, and then basically you've got that plastic housing that goes back on like so and kind of holds all that in position. And then at this point, you want to take some, uh, some real grease. And in this case, I like to use pen precision blue grease. It's good stuff. All right, and I'm just going to demonstrate real quickly here what I do with this. I just take a little bit of blue grease there to that, that pinion gear, all right, and that's all you need to do, all right. Now, don't forget, you've got that small spring that needs to go back in position here, okay. And it's easy to lose, so just take your time. You want to make sure you clean up the housing really, really well. Get all the old grease, dirt, grime, anything in there. Get it all out of there. All right, clean it up. Take the time to, to, to really, really clean it. And then when you go back, there's these two slots here on either side here. Okay, and they need to line up with two slots that are in the housing here. It's a little difficult to see on camera. Okay, but it'll make sense if you're working on it. You'll see it, and you'll see what you need to do. 
And then essentially you just need to be slow and careful. You'll just kind of gently slide down into position. And then you need to push that spring in as you're doing it so that it slides into the kind of this trough here that they've made that holds this, uh, this housing that holds that spring in position, okay? All right, so it should look like that when you're done. All right, nice and flush there. All right, we're gonna put this cap back on. Make note of the orientation of these parts when you're taking them apart, all right? But it snaps in these two little pins that stick out right there. You wanna make sure that that tab is right there in that housing, okay? And then I just like to take some penetrating oil or some uh, real oil to these uh, threads here, okay? And then put those back in and that way it'll prevent rust and corrosion and things of that sort, okay? And, you know, I say this, uh, I've said this in a few videos at least, um, you know, when it comes to using oils, yeah, use fishing reel oils, you know, that, that are, you know, made for fishing reels. Don't just use any kind of oil. Uh, you know, it's, um, it's not really worth the headache. Um, fishing reel oil has a certain kind of viscosity and it's made a certain way to withstand uh, certain elements that fishing reels uh are exposed to okay so it's worth it to make you know that small investment and you know another thing that i've said before is a bead is all you need in the right spot basically just you know a little bead of oil you know in the right spot in the right location not you know squirting it on there and just having it ooze all over the place you know that's not um that's not really the way to go and all it's going to do is create more problems down the road. So, and that goes the same with the grease as well. Okay, so now we've got all these pieces uh, lined back up here again. All right, so now what we can do is we can get ready to put our rotor back on. All right, so you want to do an inspection. All right, you want to make sure that you, you checked under here. Hit a little bit of penetrating lube under here. Okay, and then also along the seams of the bale, these bale seams here, and that'll seep down into where the springs are and make sure that you've got some good spring firing going on there. Okay, and then the only other thing to do is to check the line roller. I've also got a separate video on that. You can check that out on the YouTube, but it's just a Phillips head screw in this case. And this comes apart, all right? And you can take the line roller or line guide off and just clean uh, the shaft that it rests on and then hit a little bead of that lube uh, oil right there and then put it back together all right but you can check out that separate video uh, if if you want some more tips and tricks on how to do that stuff okay so we're going to put that 10 mil nut back on here and this does not need to be over tightened okay but you want it to be snug okay like so and then Abu has done us the favor of uh, giving us a couple of different options to choose from uh, to put that set screw in here. So you can just, uh, you know, pick, uh, you know, whichever one makes the most sense, basically. From what I can tell, anyway, they're all the same size. Just tighten that up and then it should look like that. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to uh, start assembling the rest of our pieces and parts in here. Okay. So we've got a cross wine block. Clean it up with a brass wire brush or a toothbrush, some penetrating oil. And then we take our blue grease uh, to this here and get some blue grease back on those teeth there. And underneath as well and on top put that back in there same deal here with our cross wine block just take a little blue grease under there once it's all clean okay now remember you cannot get your uh, main gear out without taking out 
the axle shaft first. Okay, so what that means is, is we have to put the main gear back in first before we put the axle shaft back in. Okay, so we've cleaned up our main gear now, all the teeth nice and clean, all right, blue grease, and then we go back. Now make note of the orientation here of this cross wind block. You need this to be all the way down at the base of the reel, okay, because that's the only way you're going to be able to access that when you go to put the axle shaft back in position. Okay, so we've done that, all right? Axle shaft, we've taken our 4 steel wool. We've cleaned this up, make it nice and smooth, okay? Then we go back with the blue grease, like so, okay? Don't over grease it. I can't stress that enough, okay? You just need a light film of that grease in, on there, okay? And then we're gonna go back down and we're gonna line our holes up down here at the base. Okay, the line up right there. Okay, and then just a bead is all you need right here. Okay, on that hole. And I do uh, stress uh, utilizing that oil right there because these screws are really, really small. And I have snapped off heads before. And then, you know, you're dealing with drilling it out and, you know, dealing with all kinds of extra work that you don't want. Okay, so... I do recommend doing that. We'll put this back in position here. Snug. Okay, so that finishes that part of that. Now we've got that little washer to put back on. We're going to take that blue grease uh, to this uh, part of the shaft right here. Just a little bit of blue grease there. Okay. And we have our other bearing, okay? And we're just gonna do a quick inspection on it, make sure that it's it's looking okay. Penetrating oil or uh, real oil, either or. And you can just kind of flood that bearing gently and that oil will seep down into the, the crevices and the cracks there, uh, you know, where it can. Uh, you know, but if you really uh, uh, want to be uh, thorough, check out that other video that I have on on servicing ball bearings, and you can learn more about how to do that. But also note, not all ball bearings are serviceable, okay? Uh, these, I do believe, are, but not all of them are, okay? We'll put our plate back on in position. Okay, and then we've got our screws, okay? And don't forget to hit those with that that penetrating oil or real oil. Put the screws back in position here. Yeah, I cannot wait to get this reel out fishing. You know, this is going to be a trout reel for me, actually. Uh, you know, some reels I pick up uh, for personal, you know, use to use them for fishing. Some I pick up just to have uh, some projects to work on uh, from time to time and see how the mechanics, uh, you know, work on a certain reel or whatever. You know, some reels I purchase to work on and then resell them. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's all different kinds of, of reasons, you know, for, for getting fishing reels, I suppose. But this particular reel definitely caught my eye because, A, there's not a lot of them out there of this series, this Cardinal Premier series. I don't know the date of this model reel. I did, however, try to uh, get the uh, schematic. I did get the schematic on Abu's website, and to my surprise, um, they they had all the the numbers of the parts listed, but it didn't have a description of what the parts were. You know, like the names of the parts, which I thought was rather odd. And then it also did not have um, the uh, the drag stack. Uh, you know, notated in there. It just showed the spool and the top cap, and that's it. No drag stack. Uh, so that seemed a little odd to me uh, for one reason or another. It uh, it would make sense if you uh, if you had all the parts you know listed in a schematic, but it's uh, it's not the way that it is, I guess. Okay, so we put our our cap back on on the bottom here. Okay, and then we've got these pieces here that need to go back. 
little spacer washer, red spacer washer. Okay, so now speaking of the drag stack, all right, so uh, it's pretty simple in this reel uh, from what I can tell, and assuming that there are no missing pieces, which I, I don't believe there is, I questioned it at first, but judging from the way the stack is oriented on this reel, I believe everything is accounted for. So these are the pieces, okay? And it's pretty basic. All right, there's a keyed washer, and then there's a drag washer, kind of a rubbery uh, style washer almost, but it's kind of a hard rubber, I'd say almost. Okay, and then a metal washer, okay? Okay, so we're just gonna go back in the reverse order here, starting with the keyed washer, drag washer, and the metal washer, and these pieces here, and then we got this snap ring here. So I'm gonna put that back in like so. Should hear a snap. That's always a good sign usually. I'm working with these little pieces here. Okay. And then that's ready to go back on in position like so. Put our top cap back on. Okay. And then we got our handle here, right? Take that real X oil, just a little bead of oil right here along the handle seam I like to do. And then also under here where this joint is right there. All right. And then just take a little bit of blue grease to the handle shaft. Okay. And that's all you need to do. This is a convertible style uh, reel. So you can go either side with the handle, which is handy, depending on what hand you like to use for reeling. A little bit of reel X on the thread here. And that goes back in like so. Okay. So nice and smooth. Another thing I really do like a lot about this reel is there's no play uh, when it's engaged. Uh, you know, so like it, you can't go backwards at all when it's engaged. You know, a lot of spinning reels, you know, there's just like a little, you know, there's a little jerk, you know, like I have another reel here that's probably kind of like that. Yeah, you see. Uh, this is a reel that I'm going to be working on next here, this Eagle Claw. But you can see it, it's got it's got a lot of play going back like that, and that uh, can bring on a lot of problems uh, typically, uh, and that's how you can break a lot of components if you're not careful. These reels, no way. They don't have that at all. So that's a very, very good uh, design uh, option on uh, Abu Garcia's part. So I'm going to try this out here, make sure it's all smooth. Anti-reverse is good, so that's fine. And then we've got our, our drag, and, you know, we'll just tighten up the drag a little bit. Yep, it's nice and smooth. So there you have it. That is the Abu Garcia Cardinal Premier CP2F two-ball bearing reel, all serviced and ready to go. So, thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please do subscribe. Make sure you hit the notification button, and that way you will be getting updates as to when there are new videos coming out, and there will be new videos coming out in the days, weeks, and months to follow. So we'll see you next time.